So after you guys kept asking, and asking, and asking for the all versions of Goku versus all versions of Superman video, I'm finally making it. But first, let me explain a few things. Number one, this is not an army of Supermans versus an army of Goku. This is one Goku versus one Superman going weakest to strongest. And it's not a composite version of Goku and Superman. Number two, Goku and Superman will only be allowed to use equipment that gives them power boost. That means no power pole, no flying Nimbus, no army of robots, nothing like that. Only things like lantern rings and Patara earrings. So to everybody who kept on asking, can adult Goku use the power pole, the answer is no. Not even kid Goku can use the power pole. If you want to see a video about Goku and Superman's equipment, I already did a video on that. And yes, I know I say equipment weird. And yes, I will be allowing Goku to use fusion, but that's because if I didn't allow Goku to use fusion, I couldn't allow Superman to also use fusions. That would mean no parallax Superman, and no cosmic armored Superman. And for every Goku fan who kept on asking me not to put Cosmic Armored Superman in this video, too bad, I'm putting him in it. Now the requirements for what counts as a Goku and Superman is they need at least one of two things. One, at least most of Goku's or Superman's DNA, or their soul. They don't have to have both, they just need one or the other. I didn't really make this clear last time, so for everybody who kept on asking if Cell will be in the video, well the answer is this. This cell is comprised of 10.78% of Son Goku's DNA. These parameters are UNACCEPTABLE! Oh, and one more thing. Any version of Goku or Superman I use has to be officially licensed. It doesn't have to be canon, but it has to be at least officially licensed. That means no fanfiction characters like Goku from Dragon Ball Multiverse. Also, apparently the definition of what a year is has been changed in my absence. I said last time this video would take me a year to make, but people thought it would be instantly made, apparently. I wasn't aware that the definition of a year was changed, but apparently it was. With all that out of the way, let's start off with the weakest versions of Goku and Superman. Baby Goku and Baby Baby Superman. Baby Goku is from a planet with 10 times Earth's gravity, and Baby Superman was from a planet with 36 times Earth's gravity. So I think it's pretty obvious that Baby Superman takes the win. Now I understand that there's more than one version of Baby Superman out there, but if we went through every single one, this video would take forever. Now we move on to 12 year old Goku, season 1 of Dragon Ball. This version of Goku is strong enough to lift a two-ton car over his head. His striking strength is strong enough to split a log into multiple pieces. He is fast, but not quite as fast as a motorcycle. And while he is affected by bullets, they only give him bruises at most. I do think this version of Goku could beat Baby Superman. Now I understand there are some versions of Baby Superman who could beat this version of Goku, but there's really too many to go through. Plus, if you want to argue that 12-year-old Goku couldn't do enough damage to Baby Superman to kill him, Baby Superman really can't do anything to Goku, considering he's a baby. And eventually, after a few days, Goku will see the full moon, turn into the Great Ape, and kill Baby Superman. Now we move on to the next entry on our list, Adult Superman underneath the red sun with no powers when he fought Muhammad Ali. Now he still was born on a planet with 36 times Earth's gravity, so he's still a pretty strong guy, however he lost the fight to Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is a good fighter and all, but I'm pretty sure he would lose a fight to 12 year old Goku. Oh and another thing, 12 year old season 1 of Dragon Ball Goku can use the Kamehameha, which can highly damage a car. I'm pretty sure Muhammad Ali wouldn't be able to survive it. Moving up the ranks pretty highly this time, we have Original Superman, whose stats are given to us pretty clearly. He's faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, he can leap tall buildings in a single bound, the man of steel, Superman! Now originally I was actually going to play a clip from the cartoon he was in, but YouTube demonetized my video for that. Yeah, apparently playing less than a 10 second clip from a cartoon that came out over a half a century ago is good enough for YouTube to completely take away your monetization. 12 year old season 1 of Goku's Kamehameha may be able to knock him down at most, 
but I'm pretty sure a locomotive bashing into Bulma's car would do a lot more damage than Goku's Kamehameha. Even then, if Superman's faster than a speeding bullet, he could easily speed bullets 12-year-old Goku. Now we move on to 12-year-old Goku post-training with Master Roshi. After taking off a 100-pound shell off his back, 12-year-old post-training with Master Roshi Goku was able to easily leap tall buildings in a single bound. Even with a 100-pound shell on his back, Goku was able to push a 732-tonned rock. And when Goku fought the Red Ribbon Army, which was also post-training with Master Roshi when he was 12, he was fast enough to block multiple bullets at once. And if you think I'm pushing too far ahead for evidence, Goku fought Master Roshi in the 21st World's Martial Arts Tournament, who was also fast enough to catch multiple bullets at once. This fight would be extremely close, but I think Goku would take the win with his sheer amount of skill and the fact that he can use the Kamehameha. Oh yeah, and the ability to push a 732-tonned rock is way more energy than the power of a locomotive from the 1940s would put out. Now, some people think Kid Goku's Kamehameha is around moon level at this time, considering he did a beam struggle with Master Roshi, who was able to blow up the moon. However, Master Roshi was only able to do that in his buff form. And even when Master Roshi blew up a mountain, he still needed to buff himself up. So I think Kid Goku at this time would be less than mountain level. I know this is going to piss a lot of people off, but trust me, this is going to be one of the biggest lowballs I'll do for Goku throughout this video. And yes, I do believe this version of Goku can beat this version of Superman. Now let's move on to DCAU Superman, the Superman I grew up with. In the episode where DCAU Superman raced the Flash, they ran a hundred times around the Earth. The race started at 1 o'clock, and the sun was setting in the same place they started their race. Superman even confirms this all took place in the same day. You know, Flash, this morning I thought you were just a hyperactive jerk. This morning... Assuming the sun was setting at 6 o'clock and the race took 5 hours, Superman would be running nearly 500,000 miles per hour. In other words, he completely speed blitzes Kid Goku. Too slow. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Hold on, just a robot. They didn't actually finish that race. And you would be correct. They ran at least 15 laps around the Earth before Weather Wizard started interrupting it. And as they finish their 15th lap around the world, the Flash still holds a narrow lead. But here's the thing. I'm using the diameter of the Earth, which would mean they ran right through it, not around it, which is one of the most common mistakes people make while power scaling, and it's a much lesser number. Plus, I'm not taking into account all the times Superman and Flash stopped racing to help someone. So yeah, these numbers are not perfect, but they're as close as I could get. But speed blitzing pretty much means nothing if he can't kill Goku, right? Well, in the final episode of Justice League Unlimited, Superman punched Darkseid so hard, he ended up flying through multiple buildings. Then Superman punched him again, making a crater in the ground. While it is possible that Kid Goku could survive a single punch from Superman, after a few, he's gonna be down for the count. But what about 12-year-old Kid Goku post-training with Master Korin? Well, he was able to defeat the entire Red Ribbon Army and a giant robot, but DCAU Superman doesn't care. He does that all the time. But what about Goku when he was 15 after a three-year time skip? Well, he swam halfway around the Earth in a single day. But DCAU Superman ran around the Earth a hundred times in a quarter of the day. Yeah, it ain't looking so good for 15-year-old Goku. But what about 15-year-old Goku after he drank the Ultra Divine Water? Well, he did survive an attack from King Piccolo which destroyed an entire city. And his Kamehameha wave is even stronger than his own durability, considering that Raditz said his power level was going up when he used it. So I think it's safe to say that 15-year-old Kid Goku, after drinking the Ultra Divine Water, would not only have city-level durability, but he would also be a city buster. But does he have the speed to keep up with DCAU Superman? Some people would say that Kid Goku at this point was just under one-third the speed of light, considering that just after this, he trained with Mr. Popo to be faster than a bolt of lightning. But lightning isn't actually one-third the speed of light. That's the return stroke. 
Lightning is actually only 1 1,000th that speed, about 220,000 miles per hour. The vehicle by which these electrons move from the cloud to the ground is called a stepladder. It moves to the ground in rapid, luminous steps that are about 50 yards long. Each step occurs in less than one millionth of a second, and the time between each step is about one fifty millionth of a second. The stepped ladder, moving at a velocity of about 200 miles per hour, takes about one one hundredth of a second to travel from the cloud to Earth. But this is actually incorrect. Lightning travels at over 1,294 times the speed of sound, which is over 900,000 miles per hour. In fact, it's almost at a million miles per hour. So 15-year-old kid Goku, after drinking the Ultra Divine Water, is pretty much better than DCAU Superman in every single way. Now we move on to Superman from Superman Returns. He can take a bullet to the eyeball without flinching. Of course, it's not the limits to his durability, but I still really wanted to mention it. This version of Superman, at the very least, is continent level. Considering he lifted and threw an entire continent out of Earth's orbit, King Piccolo was planning to destroy an entire country in one day. But that's nothing compared to someone who's continent level. If Superman from Superman Returns threw that continent at Earth, he would most definitely destroy the entire surface of the planet. So I guess you could consider him to be planet surface level. And he could be even stronger than that, but it's hard to say exactly how much stronger, considering that continent was made out of kryptonite and almost killed him. So we have his strength and durability, but what's his speed? Well, it's pretty irrelevant. There's no way 15-year-old kid Goku, after drinking the Ultra Divine Water, could even land a scratch on this guy. But what about every single person's favorite version of Goku? Dragon Ball Evolution Goku! Yes, everyone, we're really doing this. When I said every single version, I really meant it. Dragon Ball Evolution's Goku's speed is really not that great. He has only been shown to be a bullet timer. But King Piccolo in the movie did destroy a country, and Dragon Ball Evolution Goku easily beat him in a beam struggle. However, country level is absolutely nothing compared to continent level, let alone planet surface level. But what about end of Dragon Ball slash beginning of Dragon Ball Z Goku? Goku wasn't quite as fast as Raditz, but he's pretty close. And Raditz is faster than the speed of light, considering he dodged Piccolo's special beam attack. He... he dodged it. He's faster than the, the speed of light. And yes, I know I constantly say, well that line was only in the dub. But here's the thing, when Piccolo blew up the moon, his beam attack was at least traveling at the speed of light. It takes light about 1.3 seconds to go from the Earth to the moon. But if the moon blew up, it would take another 1.3 seconds because we wouldn't see the explosion until that point. Plus, if Piccolo could blow up the moon, I'm 100% sure that Goku could also blow up the moon with his Kamehameha. Moon level is above planet surface level, so end of Dragon Ball Goku takes the win. Plus, Goku's Kamehameha wave is several times stronger than Piccolo's Ki Blast. So I would say at this point, beginning of Z Goku would be at least small planet level. So now that we're at the beginning of Z Goku, I think this is a good stopping point for the video. I want to give a big thank you to Webcam Parrot for helping me out with this video. And if you want to see the evidence I used throughout this video, links will be down below. Do you guys think I put a specific version of Goku or Superman too high or too low? Is there something I missed in this video? Please tell me in the comments section down below. My eyes have seen the glory of the cleansing of YouTube, debunking SJWs and feminazis too. We criticize reactionists in hopes they get the boot. Just a robot marches on.